The human solar system was a breathtaking sight. The sun, blazing like a golden gem, illuminated the planets circling around it. Comets streaked across the darkness, and the asteroid belt lay like a necklace of rock between Mars and Jupiter. But amid all this cosmic splendor, one ship stood out, the Rust Bucket, on routine patrols after picking up some chatter over the subspace communication channels, the rust bucket was a single human vessel floating in the vast emptiness of space. At first glance, it appeared to be a derelict, a hodgepodge of mismatched metal plates, rusted panels, and exposed wiring. The ship's hull, painted in faded and chipped colors, bore the scars of multiple impacts and firefights. It was a marvel of human engineering ingenuity, a scavenger's dream cobbled together from various spacecrafts, some old and others even older. Key features, length 800 meters, width 180 meters, height 170 meters, hull composite of titanium plates, steel and scavenged alloys. Power source, dual nuclear reactors, propulsion, four primary ion thrusters, two secondary fusion drives, armament hidden, two prototype plasma cannon arrays disguised as old antennae, one graviton imploder cannon hidden in the bow appearing as a cargo loading tube, eight tactical nuclear missile bays camouflaged as rusted airlocks. Six automated laser turrets, concealed within the hull, appearing as obsolete solar panels. Shielding, advanced energy shields hidden beneath seemingly random hull plating. The Zorak fleet was an entirely different story. Sleek, polished and menacing, the alien warships glided through space like predatory fish. Each ship gleamed with obsidian-like dark armor perfectly smooth and symmetrical, key features of Zorak mothership, length 11,500 meters, width 5,500 meters, height 2,350 meters, hull, nanocarbon composite plating, power source, quantum singularity core, propulsion, hyperluminal drive, armament, 10 high-energy plasma turrets, 4 graviton disruptor cannons, 20 photon missile launchers, 6 neutron beam emitters, shielding, multi-layer quantum-based energy shields. The Zorak fleet entered the human solar system with an air of supreme confidence. Their mothership, the Gorgoth, was flanked by smaller cruisers and frigates, all gliding silently toward Earth. Inside the rust bucket, Captain Amelia Carson watched the alien fleet approach. Her crew, a ragtag group of engineers, ex-military and outlaws, were ready. They knew the rust bucket looked like a floating junkyard, and that was their greatest advantage. All weapons and shield capabilities were hidden in cleverly disguised, rusty junkyard-type creations. Internal scanners would bounce back as by nine junk. Captain, they're hailing us, said Ensign Davis, a lanky communications officer. Patch them through, said Carson, leaning back in her chair. A holographic projection of a Zorak commander materialized on the bridge. His serpentine features twisted into a sneer, and his multiple eyes glowed with disdain. Humans, he hissed, is this all you brought to face the might of the Zorak Empire, one pile of rusting debris? Carson grinned. Yep, just little old us. The commander looked around at his officers and broke into mocking laughter. You think this pathetic vessel can stand against our fleet? You will be eradicated like the insects you are. Funny, said Carson. We were just thinking the same thing about you. The Zorak commander stopped laughing and studied the ragtag ship closely. You are bluffing. Such primitive technology cannot possibly harm us. All fleet captains stand down. We don't even need shields to get past this one lone human ship. He gestured, and the Zorak fleet's brilliant shields shimmered out of existence. The Zorak mothership loomed closer to the rust bucket. Above, the alien cruisers and frigates formed a menacing formation, shadowing the human ship like vultures circling a carcass. 
Carson turned to her crew. All right, folks, ready to show these aliens what primitive technology can do? The crew had a sense of purpose as they sprang into action. Ensign Davis activated the disguised plasma cannon arrays, which rotated into position and hummed with power. Engineer Simmons calibrated the Graviton Imploder Cannon, its targeting system locking onto the Xorak mothership, the Gorgoth. Around the bridge, crew members prepared the hidden tactical nuclear missile bays and automated laser turrets. Imploder Cannon ready, Captain, Simmons reported. Plasma arrays online, Ensign Davis chimed in. Laser turrets hot and ready, called Lieutenant Garcia from the weapons console. Carson grinned. Let's give these aliens a warm human welcome. Fire all weapons. With a thunderous roar, the rust bucket erupted into action. The once rubbish-looking ship transformed before the alien commander's eyes. The plasma cannon arrays unleashed searing bolts of energy. The graviton imploder cannon fired its crackling beam straight at the Gorgoth, and the tactical nuclear missiles streaked toward the alien fleet. Automated laser turrets sprang to life, cutting through the Zorak frigates with precision. The Zorak commander's sneer vanished as he saw the true firepower of the rust bucket. Raise shields, he bellowed, but it was too late. The graviton imploder cannon struck the Gorgoth, collapsing its hull inward with a blinding flash. The mothership imploded in on itself, its quantum singularity core destabilized by the graviton beam. The resulting explosion sent shockwaves through the Zorak fleet, shattering cruisers and frigates. Nuclear missiles found their targets, detonating with devastating effect. Plasma bolts ripped through exposed Zorak hulls, turning them into molten wrecks. The rust bucket moved like a predator among them, its hidden defenses and weaponry revealing their true nature. The automated laser turrets cut down any Zorak fighters that attempted to counterattack, while the hidden missile bays reloaded and launched a fresh salvo of tactical nukes. In mere minutes, the once mighty Zorak fleet was reduced to a scattered collection of burning wrecks and drifting debris. The bridge of the rust bucket was filled with triumphant cheers. Carson surveyed the destruction with satisfaction. Amid the debris floated the shattered remains of the Gorgoth, its dark hull twisted and charred. Ensign Davis, open a channel to any surviving Zorak, Carson ordered. Davis nodded and tapped a few keys. The holographic projection of a trembling Zorak officer appeared on the bridge. You have defeated us, the alien stammered. We surrender. How is this even possible? Carson leaned forward, her eyes cold. You came to our system intending to enslave us, and you mocked us for our primitive technology. Now you understand what humans are capable of. The Zorak officer bowed his head. We underestimated you. We will withdraw and never return. See that you don't, Carson said with an edge in her voice, and next time don't judge a book by its cover. The projection vanished, and Davis turned to Carson. Do you think they'll keep their word, Captain? Carson leaned back in her chair, a grim smirk on her lips. Probably not. But now they know what happens when you mess with the rust bucket, and besides we have 150 more of these hidden around the solar system. I just wanted to see what one could do. The rust bucket sailed through the debris field, the sun shining brightly behind it. Earth stood serene in the distance, with the other planets of the solar system as its loyal sentinels. The lone ship, disguised as a heap of junk but bristling with firepower, was a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. Captain Amelia Carson looked out at the stars. All right, folks, let's head home. We've got a fleet to rebuild. The crew nodded, and the rust bucket turned its battered bow toward Earth ready to defend the solar system from any future threats. The Zorak Empire would surely remember this day, and the humans who fought back with the rust bucket, the ship that looked like a pile of rubbish but packed a punch unlike any other. And so, with its hidden might and trusty crew, the rust bucket sailed on, a silent guardian of humanity's future among the stars.